The idea of it is good, but the execution is bad and it's completely ruined by those adverts. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Pete and I'm a behavioral science consultant who specializes in the science of habits. So I thought it would be fun today to make a video reviewing some habit apps and give them a rating out of 10 according to how well I think they would help you build your habits. So let's jump into it. This is the new Google Calendar. It looks like this and this and this. So the first app we're going to look at is Google Calendar. Now, obviously Google Calendar is not strictly a habit app, but it is an app that a lot of us would turn to when we first try to build a new habit. And you can replace Google Calendar with whatever popular calendar app that you like to use. Now, I think that Google Calendar could actually be very beneficial in helping people build habits for several reasons. The first reason is that it's an app that a lot of people already use. And that's actually important because if it's an app that you're used to using, that means your brain doesn't have to work hard in trying to learn a second new behavior, which is not true for the other habit apps that we're going to be reviewing in this video. So Google Calendar has that advantage that you're already in the habit of looking at it, so you're not adding any additional behaviors in that sense. It's also very helpful because it contains the rest of your daily schedule in it. In habit science, we talk about a stable context being really important for building habits. And one of those contextual factors is the time of day at which you perform it. And so by scheduling in your new behavior into your calendar, that'll help you keep consistent and maintain that stable context. And as a result, it might actually help you turn that new behavior into a habit faster. But at the end of the day, Google Calendar is pretty basic. It doesn't really do anything to help that new behavior feel rewarding. And it also doesn't provide any like advice or tips or anything extra to help that habit process even more. So while it is a bit basic, I do think that Google Calendar is a good starting point for people who want to build a new habit. And I would give Google Calendar a five out of 10. So the next app we're going to look at is one called Habitica. Now this is an app that tries to turn your habit building process into a gamified experience. They give you this pixelated avatar that you can upgrade with items that you buy with money that you earn from doing your habit. It's a really nice idea because one of the most important factors for building habits is to make it rewarding. And in theory, this experience of gamification, of earning coins and points for doing your behavior and therefore upgrading your character would make that experience more rewarding, but it has a few problems. The first problem I found when using this app is that I don't really care about my character. While I guess it's kind of cool to see him upgrading, I don't really feel compelled to want to make him better. Especially at the start of the habit building process, which is actually the most important part for when you're trying to build a new habit, because I haven't invested that much time with this character yet, I haven't played with him very much and I don't really know what he does because he doesn't seem to do anything. And as a result, I don't find the rewarding factor particularly effective. So without the rewarding factor, what are we actually left with with Habitica? We're basically left with a very basic to-do list which we can tick off and get these fake coins for. And that, to be honest, is not very helpful in building habits, mainly because all you're doing really with this app is adding extra behaviors to your habit building process. It's already hard enough to try and build one habit, but by trying to use this app to help you, you're effectively having to build two habits, neither of which feel very rewarding. So while in principle, I like the idea of gamifying habits, I don't think this is the right execution for it. So I'm going to give Habitica a three out of 10. So the next app we're gonna look at is one called Fabulous. Now Fabulous is very interesting because it was actually developed by behavioral scientists. In particular, one very famous behavioral scientist called Dan Ariely. So you know that this app is filled with lots of behavioral science tips and tricks. But how effective do I think it actually is in terms of helping you build your habits? Well, they seem to be doing a lot of very clever things throughout this app. For example, interesting thing that I noticed they're doing is starting you off with a very easy habit, drinking water when you wake up in the morning. Now there is some research to suggest that starting off with easy habits helps us build our what behavioral scientists call self-efficacy, which is basically our belief in ourselves that we can actually accomplish the tasks that we set our mind to. And so by starting with something very easy, like 
drink water first thing in the morning, it builds that self-efficacy and therefore makes us more likely to be successful in pursuing our habits and other productive pursuits. Another clever feature that I noticed that Fabulous has is Circles. Circles is a social platform where you can connect with other people on Fabulous who are trying to accomplish the same habit as you. Now, one of my favorite findings from all of habit science is that the greatest source of friction in our lives are the people that we hang out with, our social circles. If you're hanging out with people who hold you back from pursuing your habits, then you're very unlikely to be successful. But if you surround yourself with people who encourage you to be successful in your habits, you're far more likely to do so. So I really like the idea of circles. Having that social element where other people can cue you and trigger you and reward you for building your habits is actually a very effective method. Now I could go on and on about all the clever things that Fabulous are doing, but this video would take too long. So I would just say that overall, I would give Fabulous a nine out of 10 for helping you build your habits. I think it's a very well-designed app with tons of behavioral science built into it, no surprise there. My only criticism would be that maybe it's overcomplicating things. If you're trying to build a habit, the only things that are really important are reward and routine, making it feel rewarding and helping you stick to a consistent routine. Fabulous does accomplish those things, but they also add lots of other stuff, which I think adds too much bloat to the app, in my opinion. However, overall, Fabulous, very good app, nine out of 10 from me. So the next app we're gonna look at is one called Focus Plant. Focus Plant is an app that's specifically designed to help people with their smartphone addiction. The way that it works is that you have a little garden with some plants in it, and then every time you set the timer to focus, you end up watering your plant, which helps it grow. Now this is a very clever mechanism for several reasons. The first reason is that it's very specific to the bad habit of using your phone too much. By being this specific, they can design an app that will counteract it in a more effective way. In this case, when you click focus, which waters your plant, it not only makes that focus time feel rewarding because in your head you're helping to water your plant, but you're also unable to touch your phone or do anything else on it. That's really clever because when we remove temptation from our environment through software like this, we're actually more likely to be be able to focus on our productive behaviors. What's even cleverer about Focus Plant is that because it's a plant that grows on your app that you want to keep alive, it acts as a kind of psychological commitment device. What I mean by that is that basically it makes you feel bad if you're not focusing and watering your plant. And there's tons of research in behavioral science that shows that when people have a commitment device, they're far more likely to follow through on their intentions. So Focus Plant isn't necessarily trying to help you build new habits, but it is trying to help you break your old bad habit of being on your phone too often. Often. So as a result of that, I think that Focus Plant is a very well-designed app that tackles a very specific type of habit that you're trying to break, and it does so in a way that makes sense in terms of the behavioral science. So I would give Focus Plant a 9 out of 10. So the next app we're gonna look at is one called Charity Miles. Now Charity Miles is a very simple app which basically encourages you to do more physical activity through walking and running, and by doing so, you'll earn money for charity. Now, the thing I really like about Charity Miles is that it's incredibly simple and very specific to the type of habit it's trying to build. It's not trying to help you build tons of different habits in one go, it's just trying to get you to be more active physically. And as a result of that, there's very little bloat on this app. It's incredibly simple, you record how much physical activity you do, it tells you how much money you've raised for charity, and then it has features for helping you get sponsored and earning money. Now, in my opinion, I think this is a very clever and well-designed app because it actually makes the experience of doing physical activity somewhat psychologically rewarding. Because you feel like you're earning money for charity, that's going to give you a lot more motivation for when you're actually doing the behavior. And potentially seeing this amount of money going up as you run or immediately after you run is going to release some sort of dopamine in your brain, which is going to make that habit more likely to form. So Charity Miles, I think, is a very simple app, but from a habit science perspective, it does accomplish its goal very well. I'm going to give Charity Miles an eight out of 10.
Now in a similar vein, here's another app that helps you earn money when you do physical activity. It's called Sweatcoin. Now Sweatcoin is a really popular app, it has over 53,000 reviews on the iOS store. However, I think that Sweatcoin is a very poorly designed app and here's a few reasons why. Firstly, when you try and claim rewards, it hits you with these really obnoxious and long and skippable ads, which I think just makes the whole experience feel very unrewarding. And when it comes to building habits, you need the experience to feel rewarding and low friction in order to help you build that habit. And having really long and skippable obnoxious ads does the total opposite of that, which I think will hinder your ability to want to use this app. Secondly, the amount of money that you earn from Sweatcoin is pretty much negligible. It's such a tiny amount of money that you don't really care about it and it doesn't really help you feel rewarded or good about actually doing that physical activity unless you're doing a lot of it. Unlike Charity Miles, which we talked about earlier, because you're earning the money for yourself, you don't have that added benefit of the warm glow effect in behavioral science that says that you feel good when you do altruistic things. Instead, you just feel like you're trying to earn some quick cash for yourself and actually that does not feel as good as giving to other people like giving to charity. They do try to do some clever things like add some variability to the rewards, which is a good idea because variable rewards are more rewarding for our brain than just consistent regular rewards. However, because those rewards are only unlocked by watching these horrible ads, it actually makes those re variable rewards unrewarding. And as a side note, it looks like Sweatcoin are trying to release their own crypto, which is a little bit cringe in my opinion. So overall, I would give Sweatcoin a four out of 10. The idea of it is good, but the execution is bad and it's completely ruined by those adverts. Now the next app that we're looking at is called Habit Rabbit. Now Habit Rabbit is this cute little rabbit who encourages you to pursue your habits. And the app is basically a habit tracker that allows you to, well, track your habits. So you record every time that you do it. And your reward for doing your habit is you help your habit rabbit clean up his room and you earn some sort of in-game currency that you can spend to help your rabbit out. Now, while I think that this app gets a 10 out of 10 for being really cute, I think it gets more like a four out of 10 for helping you build your habits. And here's why. The problem with purely habit tracking apps is that they don't actually help you build habits. Habit tracking is good for feedback in a way, but what it does is actually add an extra behavior on top of the habit that you're trying to build. So rather than making your habit more likely to form, you're actually making it less likely to form because you're adding this extra layer of complexity of having to also record when you do the habit as well as actually doing the habit itself. So sorry, Habit Rabbit, but it's a four out of 10 from me. And the last app on our list is Forest. Now Forest is a massively popular productivity slash habit building app. It's the only paid app on this list as well. And well, it's absolutely massive. They were ranked as the number one paid app in 157 different countries. And they recently secured a partnership with none other than BTS. So you know that it's a pretty popular app. But is it worth all the hype? Well, here's my point of view. I think that Forest is a very clever app in its design. The way it works is that as you focus, you actually plant trees in this, well, forest that you're building on your phone. This forest will grow and flourish as you focus more and are more consistent with your behavior. And as a result, that actually makes that behavior feel somewhat rewarding. You're not just doing your behavior, but you're also growing a tree at the same time. And that at the same time point is really important because it means that the reward for doing your behavior is occurring congruently with the behavior itself. And that's really important for building habits because it helps your brain learn that the behavior you're doing is related to that reward that it's feeling, that dopamine release. The other rewarding aspect of this app is that the trees aren't just virtual, but you're actually planting real trees in a different part of the world. So similar to Charity Miles, Forest benefits from that warm glow effect in behavioral science, that altruistic kind of mushy feeling you get when you do something good for other people. The other good thing about Forest is it's all about trying to stay focused on your productivity, which I really like. Absolutely that are specifically designed to tackle one behavior are often more effective than trying to tackle many at the same time. And the last clever thing about Forest is that it's a very powerful commitment device. After you've got a few repetitions in and you've started to build this forest up into something which is quite impressive, 
What happens is that if you don't focus then for a long period of time, that your forest will actually start to die. And now obviously your forest dying doesn't feel very good. And so that acts as a powerful commitment device to get you to follow through on your intentions and carry on focusing. The only drawback I would add to forest, which is the same for the other apps in this list, is that it's again, a second habit that you're having to build. It's a new behavior to tack on top of the new behavior you're already trying to turn into a habit. So for that reason, it might not work for everybody. Also, if you don't find growing virtual trees rewarding then it might not work for you too but overall I think that Forest is a very well designed app and again I would give Forest a 9 out of 10. Okay so those are all the apps that we were going to rate in today's video. As a closing thought I would say that if you're trying to build a new habit then using an app is probably not the way to go and the reason for that is because like I said earlier you're trying to add a second behavior on top of the habit you're already trying to build. Because of that all you're doing really is adding complexity which will likely hold you back and stop you from building the habit rather than help you. However, if you've tried that before and it's not working for you and you do want to try an app, then I would go with the ones that I rated higher on this list. In general, the ones that I think are better are the ones that are specific to a behavior that you're trying to build and that make the behavior feel rewarding during the time that you're actually performing the habit. So I hope you guys found this video interesting and useful. If you did, can you please give me a thumbs up down below because it really helps me out. And if you have suggestions for other things that I should be reviewing, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.